Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to Stalls TV. Welcome to today's live broadcast of uh, a heat printing comparison, what you should know before you buy. Uh, before we get started here, I just want to uh, make sure everyone can hear me uh, and see me properly. There's a little chat feature there um, within your website there. If you could just let us know if you could hear us, that'd be great, and we'll move forward. Nobody, uh, you know, everybody can hear me. That's great. So without further ado, uh, my name is Mike Koval. I'm with Falls TV, and I'll be your presenter today. Um, I do also have some help with me here. We have Jody, who's the facilitator, who will be running our chat, which, by the way, there is live chat throughout this presentation. So if any time you have questions, just chat them in, and I'll be pausing briefly throughout the, um, throughout the presentation you know, to answer those questions for you, and Jody will fire those off to me. And we also have Taylor with me will be following me uh, with some cameras. So you see a girl on camera, don't get scared. She's just got the extra camera for, uh, for some close-ups and things like that. So uh, well, let's get started today. Um, so first thing we're going to cover today is what the most important things that you could look for when considering a heat press for your business. And then what we're going to do after that is we're going to tie those three pieces, which the, the, all the Stahl's Hotronics heat presses you know, have those three features and how each one of them are uh, incorporated into each press and the benefits of each, you know, as to why you may choose this particular heat press. You know, so the first thing that you want to look for is accurate temperature. And, you know, the, it's definitely preferred to have a digital temperature on your heat press, so that way, you're, you know, you're going to have pretty much to the degree accuracy. The second thing you want to look for is accurate time. Again, you want to have a digital timer, you know, so you don't have to set up an optional timer or count in your head down the, the specific time that a transfer takes to heat press. And then third, and most importantly, which is a lot, a lot of times forgotten, is an even pressure throughout the entire platen size of the, um, of the heat press. And what an even pressure is going to do, give, give you a consistent pressure, whether you're in the middle of the press, the side of the press, the bottom of the press, the top of the press. So why are these all important? Because the advancements of transfers today, you know, from screen printed transfers, digital transfers, CAD cut vinyl, and the adhesives go with them have advanced tremendously throughout the years. And each transfer, each, each vinyl, you know, they're all going to require their own recipe with specific times, specific temperatures, and specific pressures so that that adhesive that's, that's baked onto that vinyl or transfer is going to liquefy the proper temperature to give you a 100% perfect heat transfer every time. You know, so those three things are the most important things that you consider when adding any kind of heat press to your business. Okay, so what we're going to go into, um, I'm going to launch some poll questions here, you know, just to kind of gauge, to see where everybody's at and their familiarity with heat pressing is, how many of you currently own a heat press? Okay, looks like everybody owns a heat press, which is great. So, you know, all of you that are now familiar with, you know, how a heat press works. And second poll question is, how many employees do each of your businesses have? It's like 75% uh, of you are one-man operations, and 25% you know, of you, you know, have uh, six to ten employees, you know, so, you know, uh, got a little variety here as to, you know, shop size. So let's get into each of the heat presses that we see here in the room. We're going to go over each one of these presses to show, you know, how they incorporate the three main ingredients to a, a successful heat transfer, you know, and, you know, some of the specific features that each press has to offer. So what we're going to do to get started here, Taylor's going to come in with some uh, close-ups here. It is the Stahl's Max line of heat presses. Now this is a clamshell style heat press with fully digital time and temperature readouts. Again, so that's that the first two, two things that we recommend for accuracy is time and temperature. As you see, it's a digital timer or temperature readout. So 
with this particular press, you're going to have uh, plus or minus two degrees from whatever the, uh, the temperature is reading on, on the uh, digital readout here. You know, so you know that that's going to be a, a accurate temperature for your particular application. And we also have a digital, digital timer here, which you can set from anywhere from 1 to 99 seconds. So we have that there. So you're going to get to the, you know, to the specific time, whichever that, that uh, transfer requires for you. Okay, and to set each of those, you just hit your mode button, and then you would plus or minus, you know, to whichever temperature you want to go to for whatever your transfer calls for. Hit the mode again, and you're going to be able to plus or minus your time to, again, whatever the transfer settings require. And there you have your press set. Okay, and as I said, this is a clamshell uh, style press, which, which, you know, it gets its name because it opens and closes like a clam. So when you lock this down, just close it down, and then the timer counts down. You know, then it will beep for you to know when it's time to open up the press. I should have should have reduced the time here a little bit, but you know you'll you'll hear an audible sound, which is good because you know, presses in the past you know that didn't have timers. You had to sit there sometimes count in your head, have a little egg timer, you know, to know when to open it. But this is a nice audible, so if you're you know across your shop, you know you hear that to come open up your heat press. And this is a manual, manually operated heat press. You know, as you saw, I opened or I closed it manually, and you know I have to open it manually. And this one also has now the third thing you want to look for again, like we said before, is pressure. And all Hotronics heat presses have a patented over the center pressure adjustment. And what this over the printer, uh, over the center pressure adjustment gives you, is an even disbursement of the pressure from anywhere from the middle out so that regardless if you're pressing in the, your transfers here in the middle of the press, here, in the back, to the left or the right, you're going to get a 100% even pressure across it no matter the thickness of the s substrate that you're uh, applying to. You know, so, and this one, you know, as far as how do you gauge the pressure on this, it's more of a feel. You know, so you know, this one right now I just locked it down very easily with about two fingers. You know, that, that's a light pressure. You know, and if I want to increase that pressure to a medium, you know, give that a couple twists, and then you'll be able to feel it, you know, be a little harder to lock down. You know, one of the disadvantages of that is, um, you know, I may be operating a press that's, you know, pretty light to me, you know, but somebody else comes and, you know, it could be a very heavy pressure. So, again, you kind of gauge the pressure by feel, you know, which, you know, which isn't the best way to do it. So, that, uh, you know, Rip out wraps up the uh, the stalls max. Ooh, one other thing I like to, to mention, sorry about that, is this press also offers quick change platens. You know what that means is these. If you could get under here, Taylor, is there's a little latch that you could release here to remove this platen and be able to change it out. But uh, you know, once we all the Hotronics presses have uh, the quick change platen, so we'll get into that after we kind of go over all of them. You know, so you see exactly how that works benefits that it has. And also, the Max, it is typically a desktop uh, heat press, but as you can see here underneath, we have it mounted on the counter caddy. And what this does is it basically converts this heat press to 100% threadability here. So you have all this open space. So what this is going to do, it's going to allow you to accommodate you know, a lot more items by using the interchangeable platens, you know, for doing bags and shoes and, you know, jerseys and things like that. So without this, you know, you have this base right here that's kind of going to affect you. You're not going to be able to thread many garments because it's going to get caught there. And again, once we get into those, um, uh, <coughs> the, the optional platens, I'll, I'll, you know, highlight the threadability a lot better than what you're going to see here. So anytime you get a clamshell, I always would recommend getting the uh, either the counter caddy or the uh, standard caddy, which is on wheels and has adjustable height, which you'll see, you know, on the uh, the press that we're moving to next. Okay, and what we have here next is the Hotronics Auto Open Clamp. You know, so again, it gets named the clamshell style, just like the Max. You know, because it opens and closes as a clamp. But this this heat press takes the clamshell to a next level. Because when I mentioned auto release, is when you lock this heat press down, you know, rather than having to sit and wait around for this timer to open, this one's going to open automatically. So this is a huge benefit to those of you that are a one-man shop. 
you know, so what that means, you know, you could uh, lock this heat press down, you know, and you're always multitasking in your shop trying to, to do all as many jobs as you can as quick as you can. So what you could be doing here is you lock this heat press down, you could be waiting, you could be stepping up to prep to your staging area, to prep your shirts, to grab your next transfers, so that as soon as this one opens up, you're, you're taking that shirt off and getting that next shirt on there. Or if you know if you have to wait on a customer, you know the phone rings. You know you're going to be able to walk away with confidence in knowing that this heat press is going to open automatically, and then that way you're not going to have any ruined transfers, ruined garments, ultimately saving you the money in the long run. Okay, and as with the Max, we have a digital timer and temperature readout. You know, so as you see, you change the, the the temperature the same way. You know you click the the mode button, plus or minus for your temperature. And with this one, you also have a timer setting, which you could set, but you also have two timer settings. So I have my first hit. So if you're doing a pre-press, you know, you could set that for four to five seconds to pre-press your garment. And then you can go time number two, and you could set that to the full application time for, you know, 10, 15 seconds, whatever it may be, you know, so that you have that program in there. So the, the pre-press will lock down for five, okay, and then... I had that changed to oops, second time change to 10 seconds. You know, there's the five for the initial pack. And then once I go and open that up, I press it again, you'll see it counts down for the 10 seconds. So that, that's a nice feature there. So you can kind of set your pre-press and set your full dwell time. And we're, we're also, this has a, some benefits over the max as well. It's a live pressure readout. You'll see it here right now. It's reading zero because the heat press isn't locked down yet. But once we lock this down, this is going to change a numerical value anywhere from zero to nine. Right now we're set at a four, which is on the lighter side of a medium pressure. So that now what this means is no matter who is using this press, whether it's me, whether it's you know my buddy who you know works out you know five days a week and has got some strong muscles. You know, it's going to be the same exact pressure for me regardless of the setting or the thickness of the item. And, one, and again, the, to adjust that, it's the same as the max. You just twist this to the left to loosen or twist this to the right, you know, to increase your pressure. And one, one important thing to remember, you know, when adjusting the pressure on your heat press is always have the garment or the item that you're pressing loaded into the press when gauging that pressure. Because if I lock this down now, you know, it, it's going to say a four, but when I put a, let's say, a t-shirt in there, you'll see that pressure change. Okay. So if I load that on there, see that pressure already jumped up to a seven. So, you know, you want to make sure you always do your pressure adjustments before or after loading your garment. Okay. And again, the Max, or I'm sorry, the, the Auto Clam, just like the Max, if you check out under here, has the, the quick release platen lever there. You know, so those platens are easy to change. And again, we'll get into that when we show the optional platens. And if you can kind of get a shot of the caddy there, Taylor, you know, this is the, the original caddy, which is on, on wheels. So you, so you can move it around your shop. And it also has adjustable height settings. So depending on your shop setting, you know, that'll depend on which caddy you want to choose, you know, whether it's the desktop model or, you know, if you kind of have more of a mobile shop where you kind of have to move it around from time to time, you know, the caddy on wheels is definitely going to benefit you the most. Okay, so that about wraps it up for the, uh, the auto clamp. So now we're going to move over to the Hotronics Fusion. Um, this heat press is probably uh, our, our best-selling heat press to date. And this is the Hotronics Fusion. And this is uh, a unique heat press. You know, probably the, it's one of the only in its class that will do this. It could act as a swing away, which you see here, which the platen swings out. Or you could also pull out that lower platen instead of opening like a clamp. And some advantage of this is, you know, swinging it away or pulling out this lower platen, it gives you 100% heat-free workspace. As you saw under in the clamshell, anytime you're trying to place a garment, you know, you're going to be under that heat surface. Here, you know, you have nothing here, so you don't have to worry about burning your fingers. Some advantage of this, if you're doing a lot of pre-cut lettering, pre-cut numbering, this is the press for you. Because you don't want to be under that heat press on the clamshell, 
placing each one of those letters under that heat. You know, that's where you're going to run into the uh, probability of burning your hand, burning your finger. And so this makes it nice because you have that heat-free workspace. And again, if I were doing it in swing away mode, it kind of offers the same thing. So there, you, you can pull that out as well to even give you a little more room. And another feature of the Fusion is 100% threadability underneath. You know, and with this one, it's not any additional pieces of equipment or accessories. This one automatically has that 100% uh, threadability there so that you can easily you know, dress the platen again. We'll go over that once we uh, talk about all the different lines of heat presses. And this one also has a quick release, quick release platen. It's just by this little uh, thumb screw there that pulls out, and you'll be able to pull that out, which, again, you know, we'll go over. It's a little, little different, you know, but the same idea as far as the quick release goes. Okay? And let's, let, let's take a look at the control panel of this Fusion, which also makes it unique. This is 100% uh, touchscreen operation. Um, so you can adjust the temperature here just by touching the, uh, the, the temperature there. And why is that not working? Oh, that's because that's the temperature that it's set at. If I want to change it, I've got to hit this side. That's why. So, again, you have your red uh, thermometer there and your blue thermometer. The blue, obviously, you're going to lower that temperature there just by touching that to whatever you want it to go to. Or by hitting it up to raise it. Okay, so if I want to select my time, right now it's set at four seconds, do the same thing again. Just touch that time and increase it or decrease it to whatever my specific transfer requires. And this one also has a live pressure readout. And again, this one, it, I lock it down and it's set at a two. You know, so like I said, like just like the auto clam and the auto uh, or the, the pressure gauge there, no matter who's operating that press, you know that that's going to be a two, which is a light pressure. And again, load your garment in there before adjusting your pressure. Now that's the old way to do it. Another feature of the, the Fusion here is it has programmable settings within it. So you could, you could override the temperatures at any time, like I just did, but you can also pre-program this. As you see here, we have a lot of our more popular um, materials here. So you can go in to the settings here, you could go to setup. There, this is also password protected for, you know, if you're the manager, your uh, uh, heat printing operation there. You know, you could have a specific password, you know, so that the users can't get in there and you know change any of the settings. So we'll go ahead into enter that in here. Here's where we go to our preset setup. So if I want to create a new one, I click the new button. I can name it to whatever I want. You know, so if you're doing a lot of uh, transfer express transfers, the goof proof. You could plug that. You could say goof proof. You could set up to four different timers on here for your pre press, you know, uh, time and a temperature, and then a post press, you know, with a cover sheet. You could set your pressure here to what it would need to be, and you could also set your temperature. So once you plug those in there, you could save it, and it would be saved in your settings from now on. So that basically what this is going to do is take it out having to leaf through any sheets of paper, any of the tech sheets you may have taped on your wall. So this just takes out all the some clutter from away from your desk and any of the guesswork. So, you know, if you have, you know, a couple of shifts running or you have somebody running the press in the morning, somebody running in the afternoon, you know, you don't have to, you know, talk back and forth, hey, what's uh, what's thermofilm apply at? You have that set in there and you don't have to worry about it. Another nice thing about this is it has auto on and off features. So you can program it seven days a week you know, to turn on at any time. So let's say you get in the shop, your shop opens 9 o'clock in the morning. You can have this turn on at 8.30 in the morning. So once you're in at 9, you know, your heat press is warmed up, ready to go. And the same applies, you know, you can turn it off at night. I know I've been guilty of this in the office, leaving the press on overnight. You know, not that it's really going to you know, do any major damage, but really just, you know, running up your power, power bill for no unnecessary reason. So you could shut that off at 5 o'clock, you know, every day to, for that peace of mind. So... Another nice feature there. Okay. Okay, we have a question here regarding the Fusion. How wide does the Fusion open? How wide does the Fusion open? Taylor, if, you're, if you can get in there, there, you see you have about, I'd say, nearly an inch of clearance there, um, you know, for, for pretty much accommodating anything, any kind of apparel, really, shoe, 
um, and even getting into tiles and plaques if you're you know, doing any sublimation printing. Does the clam also have pre presets? Unfortunately, neither the auto clam or the stalls max has presets. You know, so that's you know where you'd have to have your text sheets either memorized, you know, taped up to the wall, or a little uh, little little recipe book that you have hanging off your your table where you can leaf through and just find out, you know, if you're doing thermal film, uh, fashion film, you know, just to look through those. So that's one that's one of the reasons that makes the fusion so popular is because people could preset those things and kind of forget about everything. You know, it takes all the guesswork out, and you know, you're going to get that uh, successful transfer every time. Anything else, Jody? Okay, um, so that about wraps up, you know, the fusion. So now we're going to move on to, you know, our more top of the line fusion and overall heat press, which is the Hotronics Air Fusion. And the Hotronics Air Fusion, this is kind of definitely geared toward the high production shop, you know, because it is 100% automatic and just push button operation. You know, so what I mean by push button operation is you have your two buttons here on the side push that button, it closes it, and again, as automatic press, it'll open, and it'll also automatically swing away. And then this one, you can swing it back, to, if you zoom down there, it's operated by a foot pedal. So I put that, click on the foot pedal, and it will swing that back. As far as the features go on the, the control board here, it's the same as the Fusion. Everything is adjusted here, you know, with the pre-settings, the auto on and off, you know, setting the time and the temperature. But as this is an air-operated press, which requires an air compressor, you know, you're adjusting the pressure with a push of a button. You know, whether your transfer requires a 55 psi, a 40 psi, whatever it may be, just click on that and up or down to increase or decrease your pressure to whatever it calls for, and it's automatically going to get going to change. And that's another nice thing about this. So for those of you doing directed garment printing, this is an excellent press for that because you could actually change the air pressure without having to twist anything. You know, so if you're familiar with the garment printer, you, you know, there's a pre-treat and there's a post-curing uh, of the ink. So when a pre-treat, it requires a very heavy pressure upwards of uh, 70 PSI to drive that pre-treat and cure it properly. And in turn, when you print it, and you have to cure the ink, it requires a very light pressure, which is around 20 PSI. So there's no more twisting or you know, turning your knobs or you know, adjusting it on the uh, compressor itself. It's all automatically done, changes on the fly, and accommodates for you know, anything, again, from t-shirts to sweatshirts to plaques and towels and things like that. So, and this one, too, incorporates 100% threadability here and quick-release platens so that those could be quickly and easily changed. And the model that you're looking at here, it is the uh, fusion, air fusion with a stand. Again, it's adjustable, but uh, the fusion is also available in a tabletop model. So again, whether you choose the, the fusion on the stand or whether you choose the tabletop model really depends on your workshop space. You know, in high production facilities, you know, a lot of that, a lot of times, you know, they have, you know, ten of these air fusions back to back. You know, because they're running so much production with this. So. And the you know, reason it benefits there is because it's a lot faster. There's not a three-step operation to open and close the press itself <coughs> you know, to, to speed things up for you there. OK. Um, and one other press. I'll go ahead and switch to me. Taylor, thank you. OK, and one other press I'd like to cover, you know, which unfortunately we don't have the, the room to show it here. It's our Hotronics Dual Air Fusion. And what that is, it is a dual station heat press that has two platens, and it works similarly to this by push button operation and open and close, but it's a shuttle press. So there's a platen, there's a platen here and a platen here, and that will shuttle back and forth, which is going to increase your production time nearly 35 to 40 percent, depending on the situation. So and what we could do after the webinar is anybody in attendance here will send out an email with some further information on the dual air fusion just so you could do some reading and research on that. You know, maybe that's a, a press that, you know, makes sense for you right now or, or sometime in the future. Okay? So that, you know, pretty much covers the specific heat presses themselves and the, and the different things, the features and specifics that they offer. You know, so what we're going to get into now is first I'll, I'll pause a little bit here to uh, see if anybody has any additional questions.
Okay, no questions. So, um, what we'll get into now, as I, I said before, is each one of these heat presses have the ability to do uh, interchangeable platens. And the interchangeable platens are another feature that takes Hotronics heat presses to a whole new level over any of the other competitors out there. What optional, you'll see here all these different optional platens in different sizes and shapes. And what this is going to do for you to al allow you to do a number of different items instead of just the, the basic t-shirts or sweatshirts to make your, make your shop a more complete shop and give you the ability to decorate anything anybody brings to you. So there's no more saying no. You know, I could, anybody with a heat press could decorate a t-shirt, a sweatshirt, something like that. But now you have the opportunity to decorate bags, purses, shoes, uh, performance wear, any size type or anything that now you could fit into a heat press using one of these platens or the standard press, uh, standard platens, you're going to have the 100% confidence. You're going to be able to decorate that successfully. You know, so we'll, we'll highlight kind of each of these uh, optional platens here uh, on our Fusion. So this is the standard 16 by 20. So let's take a look at one of our more popular uh, platens these days, which is the shoe platen. You know, this, this generates a lot of response more on the trade show floor. You know, when we, we, we were highlighting decorated shoes, and you know, the question is, wow, how did you decorate your shoes? Well, let me show you how. So, Taylor, we're going we're gonna to switch back to you here. And we're going to show just how the interchangeable platen system works and, you know, how it uh, makes decorating all these items very easy. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and take off this platen here, pulling out this little release screw. And then we can just go ahead and lift that platen off. Okay. So we'll go ahead and load in our shoe platen. Okay. See how easy that was to change. Just lock it back in. And then we're ready to uh, start making some money with shoes. And again, this, this shoe platen can fit on any of the presses that you saw and any Hotronics heat press that you saw in this video today, and including the dual air fusion. So grab some shoes here. Okay. Load our, load our shoe on here. That one on there. The other one on the other side. We're going to place our. And we're decorating with our neon pink fashion film today. So nightmares number 55. Again, this is what this is offering you is the ability to personalize shoes, nearly any kind. So anybody who wants their name, a number, you know, you'll be able to go ahead and do that with confidence, knowing that you have this press and this platen. And, you know. You know, a lot I'm seeing on the combines and sports teams, you know, they're starting to put numbers on all their shoes as well. So it's becoming a popular application. So let's go ahead and load that in there. Oh, one thing I want to do, I'm just going to use a cover sheet here. Okay. And this is just protecting the shoe. And this is our fashion film, so we'll apply this for 10 seconds. Okay. At 320 degrees, we've got to lock it down. Okay. Question was, can the Fusion that I'm using right now come on a stand? There is no stand available for the Fusion. Um, Taylor, if you can get a look here, I mean, it does come on its own base. You know, so you know, you do. Ha it still allows for that threadability without the stand. You know, unfortunately, I don't, I don't know the, you know, the scientifics of it, but it, I think it's kind of, it'd be kind of awkward with the swing operation and things like that for the stand. So right now, as as the Fusion is, it, it is only a tabletop model. Anything else? Okay. So, let's look at our shoes here. Take off our cover sheet. And peel off our, our vinyl here. Okay. Same here. And there we have our personalized tenor shoes. Again, these can be done with basketball shoes, cleats. Know, nearly, nearly any type of shoe. As long as you can fit it on that platen, you know you can make a transfer. You know, so some even, some folks have even you know, put them on there like this, you know, and decorated this little area here. You know, so a lot of different options for you, you know, and sandals and things of that nature. Okay. 
So let's take a look at another popular platen these days, the sleeve and leg. We always get the question at shows and you know, talking to many customers on the phone is how could I properly decorate sleeves and decorate legs easily? Well, let me tell you how. The sleeve and leg platen. Okay. And there you see here, it is a 5 inch by 20 inch sleeve and leg platen. And this comes with a Teflon cover sheet here, so that you know makes it easy to slide your sleeves and legs very easily. So let me go ahead and get a pair of pants here, and we'll decorate that. Okay. So I have my pair of Boxer Craft sweatpants here. I'm going to go ahead and decorate. Yes. Yeah, so if we want. There's a number of different ways to decorate, you know, pants. And a lot of times, you know, you wear them down the side, so you'd have an application on the side, or if you want, you know, a decoration, you know, on the front of the leg. So we'll do the side. You see, so you could easily, you know, position these on here, no problem. Spinning it around, not a big issue there. So we have our pants loaded. We're going to get our transfer. Pressing now is our glitter flake. So lay that on there. This is 320 for 10, correct, Jody? Thank you. I'll lay that in there. Okay. And any questions right now, Jody? While this is going on? Okay. Okay, almost zero. All right, time to open. Okay, back this out. And remove our carrier. And there we have perfectly decorated pant leg. The same would apply if we were decorating a sleeve or the other side of the leg, or again, like I said, the front. So, there we have it. Okay, now let's take a look at decorating a jersey and what threadability will give you when decorating team wear. Okay, put our 16 by 20 platen back on there. Where'd it go? There it is. Okay. Lock it, and we're going to get our jersey here. Okay, our jersey today is from Teamwork Athletic. Go ahead and go ahead, and we'll show you why threadability is a huge factor if you're decorating a lot of team wear. Okay, as you see. I have this threaded, you know, so that I dress the platen with the shirt itself. So what this what this will uh, give you the opportunity to do is increase your production time by 40% if you're decorating the front and the back of this jersey. Unfortunately, I don't have a front transfer right now, but I can place my front transfer or front number, load that in, press it for the whatever time it would be, peel that off. Now I can quickly and easily do the name and number. Just simply pulling this jersey off halfway, spinning it, spinning it around, and now I'm ready to decorate the back with a name and a number. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. So now I didn't have to take that heat press all or that jersey all the way off the heat press, put it back on. So now placing my name. Forgive my placement if I'm doing it wrong. And my number, okay. and we're applying our thermofilm here. Jody, what's that? Three thirty-four for six to eight seconds. So I'll leave it at three twenty for for now, so you don't have to wait for it. We'll be okay on that. A couple of degrees for eight seconds. Lock that down. There we have our 
name and a number on the back quickly and easily. And if I had a front transfer, you could have saw, I mean, well, you saw just by based off the operation how easy and quickly it would be to decorate a full front and a full back of a jersey very quickly. Okay. Now let's take a look at another popular application, which is a left chest application. Okay. Any questions, Jody? Okay. So I want to decorate this left chest. You know, one thing that's going to pose a problem when decorating any kind of left chest or kind of polo application are these buttons, this collar. You know, what this is going to affect, if I try to just press it just like this, odds are I can melt the buttons. And when I have my press, uh, transfer here, this, these buttons, these seams, this collar, it's going to absorb majority of the pressure from the heat press. So when I, I could lead to an unsuccessful transfer by you know, not getting enough pressure in this area here. So again, we're going to change out a platen you know, to make that a lot easier. Solar platen here. Put the or the sh uh, polo on here. By the same way, we're going to thread it on here. So now we can have these buttons fall over the side. So now when we're going to decorate this. We have a nice, flat, clean area press that left chest. No more melted buttons, no more uneven pressures that's going to lead to a you know, possible uh, defective transfer. Again, forgive my placement on this. Okay. Set in. Okay. And lock that down. And that was our flock. Jody, time and temperature. It's a cold peel in 320, okay, for 10 to 15 seconds. And this is a cool peel. Okay, so what that means is we're going to let this cool, you know, before we actually remove the backer. Okay. Uh, while this cools, Jody, any questions? Yeah, another option. You know, if you don't have the ability to to interchange platens, you know, you could use a heat printing pillow, uh, or you could use a print perfect pad. You know, print perfect pad, what that does is essentially kind of the same thing, but instead of it falling below the press, it's falling below a little pad, again, raising the pressing area so that you have a nice flat surface so you're going to get an even transfer and an even press. Okay. That's cool enough. And we have it. Successful left chest even using an interchangeable platen. Okay. Okay, the question was whether you should use a Teflon sheet or craft paper. Well, I mean, they, they both do the same thing. You know, they're protecting the garment. You know, they're protecting a screen print that may already be there or another transfer. But one of the biggest differences is when using a Teflon sheet it gives, gives your finished transfer a little bit of a sheen to it. You know, it kind of glosses it over. Whereas the craft paper, when you use that, it gives your finished transfer more of a matte finish. Now, you don't really notice that you know, when using it with standard vinyl. It's more with the digital transfers that you're using a, a solvent or eco-solvent printer to print them. That's where you see most of the difference there. Any other questions, Jody? OK. Um, let's see. What else? That, that, you know, those, those are the interchangeable platens. Um, one nice thing about Hotronics platens is, you know, they have standard optional platen sizes for, uh, with uh, being a 7-inch round, a 6x10, an 8x10, an 11x15, the shoe platen, and the sleeve and leg platen. Those are all stock. But one other nice thing that Hotronics we could do is we can create a custom size platen. You know, so maybe if you're decorating a specific bag and you need a 10 by 15 platen size, or some maybe even odd shape, like uh, some unique ones that we've done. It's like a glove platen or a koozie platen. They have six little prongs on each side. 
where you could decorate six six koozies or six gloves at a time. You know, some thing, different things that we've done. So, really, what you need to do is you can send us your dimensions. You know, we'd be you know we'd be happy to see if it's a custom platen that we can make for you. Um, another one we've had some umbrella platens. You know, just a lot of unique things that we could do. You know, with the optional platens there. Um, Let's see, what else can we cover on the heat press? Jody, any, any, any further questions? Um, well, I mean, right now, maybe if, you know, if any of you have any questions, we can kind of do an open forum right now um, you know, to, to kind of, maybe if there's something specific on certain presses, you know, whatever it may be. Okay. Um, well, on the clamshell, let's say, let's say the Stahl's Max and the Hotronics Auto Clamp. Each of these are available in three different sizes. What you're looking at here is the most popular size, is the 16 by 20. Um, it's also available in 11 by 15 uh, on both of them, 15 by 15 in the Stahl's Max, and a 16 by 16 on the Hotronics Auto Clamp. And those are just different platen sizes. Again, you know, should you decide to get a smaller one, a smaller platen size, they all have interchangeable platens, you know, so you're not losing anything there. You know, why someone would want 11 by 15 press or a smaller press? You know, maybe they're using that as a press. They go to tournaments and, you know, things like that. So a smaller press is a lot more portable than a, than a 16 by 20. You know, so they keep that 16 by 20 in their shop and they take their smaller press on the road. You know, maybe they're only uh, pressing a, a transfer that's 10 by 10 at a tournament or something like that. So that 11 by 15 fits nicely in, into a car, very portable, very lightweight, you know, to make things a lot easier for, you know, for those who uh, go mobile and on the road. Um, well, I, I think you know, that uh, about covers you know our heat presses and a heat press offering. Um, so we're going to launch our one last poll question here, which is, uh, which press are you likely going to invest in next? Okay, 25% of you leaning towards the uh, the auto clam, and 75% of you for the fusion, which kind of I, I felt it would go that way. You know, most folks that see the two in operation kind of lean towards the fusion just because, you know, of the the, the swing away and draw. Uh, the programmable settings are, are, are a great feature for for any shop, whether you're just a one man or even, you know, the high production shop. You know, where you could have all those presets. Um, so, um, I, I do appreciate everybody coming today. Um, there'll be a brief survey at the end of the webinar, uh, the broadcast today. Yeah, so you know, do us a favor, fill that out. You know, just get some feedback for you and how to make things better, or you know, maybe some new classes upcoming. And I'd also like to uh, make sure you tune in on Friday, January 23rd at 11 o'clock. Tune in to Josh Ellsworth. He's going to be covering uh, "Get It Straight: uh, The Loading and Placement Advice on Heat Transfer Printing." Again, so thanks everyone. You know, we look forward to having you all again uh, in one of our future uh, broadcasts. Thanks again.